I'm Chris, and I guess I'm your host this evening. So welcome to Odd Salon Daredevil. So can I see, if, if I can blot the lights out for a moment, who's new tonight? Who's never been to an Odd Salon before? Raise them high. It's actually a pretty good number. Thank you so much for coming out. You are in for a treat. You might be asking yourself, how does this thing work? Although your friends have probably already told you. So tonight, we'll be sharing six short stories inspired by the odd corners of history, art, science, and tonight, in particular, adventure. Thank you. Our speakers are experts on the top and enthusiastic amateurs on the bottom. Uh, and tonight, uh, we'll, be, we'll be telling you about these stories, and one important aspect that's a little different from other speaking series you may have been to is we have kind of a call and response game. Uh, so if I show you a picture of, a little, little better in the timing, if I show you a picture of, perfect, or if I show you a picture of, thank you, that's perfect, you've got the gist of it, you'll do great. Thank you so much. Um, I should also mention that if you feel inspired by tonight, if you want a piece of this action, our stage is yours. When we post calls for pitches, you are welcome to bring your best ideas and put them up here. So if you'd like to speak, go to oddsalon.com speak, and we'll have the URL for that accessible at admission and on the, the, the Facebook group, et cetera. So we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram, uh, tweet, Instagram stuff, share it as widely as you like. Tonight, we're talking about daredevils. Now, this is kind of a challenging topic for Odd Salon because we like to talk about all kinds of adventures that people go on that are arguably kind of dumb. <laughs> Polar exploration, for example, uh, or getting fired down a train track in a rocket cart. Um, but one thing that most of those adventures share is some kind of organizing goal. You're not just trekking, you know, thousands of miles with a 900 pound sledge attached to you as you slowly die of starvation in Antarctica. You're not just firing yourself propelled by rockets to smush your face and prove something impor important about human safety. You've got like an overarching purpose. And tonight, the only purpose of doing these things is that they're awesome. And this is a subject that's near and dear to my heart because I do this kind of stupid nonsense too. Uh, this was last, no, two weekends ago. Um, climbing up thing in, in Eastern California. And climbing is, is also relatively unusual these days because it's really well documented and people do some things that on any kind of objective scale are pretty dumb. Uh, like jumping more than 100 feet attached only by an elastic rope to a giant cliff. And uh, when I was looking for uh, an invocation, we normally like to lead the night off with a, a kind of inspirational quote about the subject. I kept coming back to this guy who's got a, lot, got a lot of press recently named Alex Honnold, who's notable for doing what's called free soloing, where you climb a rock without a rope, or any safety equipment like that, you just climb the thing, which sounds not entirely stupid until you take into account the fact that he's climbing things that are 3,000 feet tall and extremely technically difficult. And that's interesting enough. He's quite a personable guy, and he appears to have a, 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 at least a really nice head on his shoulders, and he's not dead yet, so he has to know what he's doing. <laughs> but what I was most interested in was a couple of articles written by his mom, <laughs> who he has got into climbing. I mean, she sounds like an amazing badass anyway. She's run four marathons or something. She, she raised him for, you know, uh, she did a pretty good job of it from what we can tell, although she, she does seem to have some questions about his, his habits. Um, but I found this, this quote of hers uh, really compelling. Imagination can be a terrible thing. Without it, I'd be leading far harder climbs but I never would have dreamed up the adventures I've had with and without Alex. Without it, my friend who fell on a free solo this summer would still be around to laugh and climb with me, but we never would have met. 
Without it, my son wouldn't be on the corner of National Geographic. Would he really be alive the way he is now? Or would he be biding time, like so many of us? Dying takes many forms. So does living. The hard part is recognizing them. And with that, I'd like to turn the stage over to our first speaker of the evening. But I want you to remember, when you're hearing these talks, think about how you can push your own boundaries. And I hope you enjoy hearing about the adventures.